Chapter 2591 They had been arguing since they were children, and there was just no end to it. Brandon smiled and said, It shows that they have a good relationship. When he thought about his son and Freya, he looked solemn. When Ken was alive, he wasn't nice to Freya. It was his fault. If Ken hadn't lived with his mother when he was a child, he wouldn't have turned out with such an extreme attitude. Freya didn't have a good mother or a brother who loved her. He wasn't a good father to her either. He thought that even if Freya ignored him and disowned him, he would have no complaints. Daisy noticed that Brandon looked sad, so she walked over. Uncle Brandon, Freya has my brother now. She has the love of you and my mother too. You should be happy for her. Brandon paused because the kind words warmed his heart. He smiled and nodded. That's true. I'm very happy. Meanwhile, at St. Donner Estate, Yorthic came back from the cabinet and saw Nolan carrying his daughter in the living room. He frowned. Is your granddaughter not enough for you? Why are you carrying my daughter too? Zena played with the Barbie and had forgotten about her own father. Nolan raised his brows. Am I not allowed? You're like a cat and mouse duo, bickering all the time. Madam Hathaway's voice came from upstairs as she walked slowly down the stairs with the help of her niece-in-law, Yuna. She pointed at Nolan with her walking stick. Rascal, why didn't you tell me that you were here? You're just as rude as that old thing at home. Nolan put Zena aside and slowly got up. I just didn't want to wake you from your nap. HMPH. She walked to the couch, sat down, and adjusted her shawl. How has your father been recently? He smiled. Don't worry. Grandpa is still healthy, so my father wouldn't be too far off. Yorick walked to Zena and picked her up. She wrapped her arms around his neck and looked at him with twinkling eyes. Daddy, you're back. Yorick was rendered speechless. How could his daughter not have seen him until now? Yuna walked over to Yorick. Give Z to me. Yorick handed her to his mother. Yuna took her and said to her, It's nap time. Zena rubbed her eyes and rubbed, then flopped into her grandmother's chest. All right. Madam Hathaway looked at Nolan and picked up the teacup on the table. Rascal, did your stupid grandfather find a new mate? He always followed me around like a puppy, but he's been quiet now. I thought he was dead. Before Nolan could speak, the door opened, and Titus grumpily walked in. What do you mean dead? Stop cursing me. Nolan, are you talking about me behind my back, you asshole of a grandson? Nolan had nothing to say. Yorick almost spat out his tea. He coughed, placed his cup down, and looked at his uncle. Uncle, you're here. Titus calmly said, I'm here for an inspection. Nolan smiled. That's why you disappeared recently. You're in Yaramore. Are you inspecting here? Titus clicked his tongue. Was he trying to call him out? Madam Hathaway blew on her tea. You two. One came uninvited, while the other came and didn't announce himself. Chapter 2592. The former that Madam Hathaway mentioned was Titus. Titus glared at Nolan. She's talking about you, coming uninvited. Nolan chuckled and looked toward the old lady. Gran, I finally know why you didn't marry my grandfather. You'd probably never find peace. Nolan, Titus was so angry his hand shook. He was such a bad grandson. He walked to Madam Hathaway and was going to sit down next to her, but she glared at him. Did I say you could sit? Titus felt annoyed but couldn't say it. He had to get up and sigh. Sell, don't listen to this rascal. Rascal. Madam Hathaway chuckled and put her hands on her walking stick. All you Goldmans are rascals. Your son, this kid, and especially you. He raised his voice. Yes, I'm a rascal. Can I sit now? Yorick turned his face away, his shoulders shaking. Nolan was used to that. The Goldman men were always shameless in front of their women. Titus took a jewelry box out of his pocket and slowly opened it in front of Madam Hathaway. There was a lotus carved from a diamond in the intricate box. It looked crystal clear. For you. Sally took it and placed it on the couch. If you have nothing better to do, don't lurk outside someone's home. If I knew that you were there, I'd ask someone to throw you out. Titus looked awkward and mumbled. Can you let me keep my dignity in front of the kids? Nolan got up and tidied up his suit. All right, I'll leave you to it. Soon after Nolan left, 
Yorick felt weird about sticking around, so he found an excuse and left. It was snowing in the garden, and the flowerbed was covered in white. Yorick walked over from behind and stood next to Nolan. How long do you plan to stay here? Nolan said, before the end of December. He smiled, missing your daughter. Nolan looked at him. Wouldn't you? Yorick looked out at the white-capped surroundings. Of course I would. If someone wants to marry her, they'll have to tithe in. Xena was a child they got after years of trying, and Xyla was at a higher risk at her age. Even though she was his only daughter, he loved her to bits. Life was never the same after Xena came into their life. Yorick turned to Nolan, because she's my only child. Nolan patted his shoulder, do you think it will be easy to find someone who will be a live-in husband? Even if you can find someone, how do you know that they won't be after your family fortune? Yorick moved his hand away and rested his elbow on his shoulder. What are you thinking, Nolan? I'm not going to accept a man who relies on my family fortune. What I meant was that they must have a home in Yaramore, a listed company, and live in Yaramore after they're married. Nolan didn't know what to say. He didn't know live-in could mean that too. Don't be jealous. We don't have a throne to inherit. Yorick looked cheeky while saying the last part. He meant Nolan wouldn't have the chance to bring Daisy back to Zilakova because he was the only heir to the throne. In the palace, when Diana found out that Daisy's parents were in Yaramore, they moved to the estate temporarily and cancelled all their afternoon plans or moved them to the next day. Chapter 2593 I don't know what to wear to meet the in-laws for the first time. If I dress up too much, it will feel too formal, but if it is too simple, it will seem like I don't respect them. Diana changed more than ten outfits, and they covered her bed, nitpicking all of them. Rick, who was long ready, looked at her helplessly. As long as it fits. The previous one looks nice. Really, she picked up the purple dress and stood in front of the mirror. You're right. I'll go with this one. Then, Diana finally got dressed and walked into the palace hall while holding Rick's arm. She remembered something. What about a gift? Rick knew she would ask, so she opened the car door for her. I've gotten it. It's in the car. Blue Valley Manor was very lively. Brandon and Freya were there, and Diana and Rick arrived soon after. They didn't have the royal guards with them to avoid looking too flashy. The royal couple walked into the hall and the steward and helpers all bowed to them while everyone who was chatting on the couch got up. Heavens, are we late? Diana quickly walked forward and saw Maisie and Nolan, then smiled sweetly and put out her hand for a handshake. Hello, I'm glad to finally meet you. Maisie smiled back and shook her hand. Nice to meet you, your majesty. Don't be too formal, we're in-laws. Just call me Diana. Diana didn't seem regal and was very friendly. Maisie had been worried that it would be hard to get along with Nalesa's mother because she was the queen. There must be some restrictions. As Diana took a seat on the couch, something came to her mind. She then asked Rick to get the gift they had prepared. Maisie was surprised when Rick walked over with an expensive-looking box. This is, it's just a little something we got since I've been looking forward to meeting you. I'm really happy about it, so I got a big one. Then she continued, don't worry, if you don't like it, I'll get another. Rick cleared his throat and cut her off, then sat down next to his wife and smiled at them. I apologize, my wife is just too happy to finally meet you. His wife was looking too friendly, and it might make people feel uneasy, especially when it came to gifts. Even though she was just worried that they might not like it, as long as they accepted it, it would mean they understood the reasoning behind it. Nolan nodded. Thank you. Daisy was used to this because Diana's gifts were enough to fill up a mall. She leaned close to Maisie and giggled. Mom, she's always so friendly. She treats me very well. Maisie smiled too. I'm relieved to hear you say that. The parents chatted on the couch while the helpers and the kitchen hands prepared for a huge party. Soon after, more guests arrived. It was Yorick, Madam Hathaway, and Titus. When Colton and Daisy saw Titus, they were shocked. Great Grandpa, Madam Hathaway greeted Diana before looking toward Colton and Daisy. I didn't think that the next time we met, you would be parents already. Daisy walked over to help her. But you stayed the same. 
Chapter 2594 Sally Hathaway was pleased to hear that. You're always so sweet. Titus was happy. Well, your son was the one who took care of her. Of course she's sweet. Sally glared at him in annoyance and wanted to ignore him. She looked toward Diana and Nales, who were standing, and smiled. Nales is getting more and more handsome. He looked more like your majesty now. Diana held her hand and leaned down because Sally was shorter. Thank you. Nales does look more like me. Nolan and Colton weren't very happy about that. She only said Nales was handsome. Was he the only good-looking one? Titus was even unhappier. He used to be very charming and handsome when he was young. Why did she not compliment him? Maisie and Freya looked at each other as the men standing next to them were treated, unfairly. Dinner was ready when evening crawled in. The table was about 25 feet long and covered in food western, oriental, fruits, and dessert. Diana gave the seat at the end to Sally, who was older. Next to her was Titus, the Goldmans, and Yorick. On the other side sat the Knowles, Brandon, and Freya. The helpers brought the dishes to them, and everyone had wine except Daisy, who had lemonade. They all enjoyed their drinks and chatted. It was a lively scene. The week after the dinner party, Diana invited Nolan and Daisy to the palace a few times and was caught by the media visiting the museum. The online media speculated that Daisy was going to be the next queen. After what happened to the tailors, the aristocrats and the cabinet members didn't dare speak about the royal family. Daisy's belly started showing more, and Nales was pretty much at home with her most of the time. Meanwhile, Freya received some good news. A famous director in Dorywood was going to use her script and had spoken to Rory Lancel about the rights. Rory had invited her to the office, and that was when she found out. Filming rights. Rory poured a cup of tea and nodded. Yes, they've offered $400,000 for the filming rights of your script since you're the screenwriter. If this sells well, you'll greatly benefit from it. That meant that the crime thriller that she had written would be made into a film and penetrate the market. She would officially be in the industry. Freya suddenly smiled. That was the best news she could have gotten. Have you properly considered it? Rory looked up. This is your pathway to becoming a golden screenwriter. She nodded and smiled. Thank you, Mr. Lancel. I'm ready. After leaving Tom's films, she got home and saw Colton when she opened the door. She jumped at him. Colton took a few steps back to counter the sudden weight on him and hugged her. What's this? She smiled and hugged him with teary eyes. My script is going to be made into a movie. Colton hugged her back. Really? Congratulations. He noticed that something was off, so he let her go and raised her chin. He saw that her eyes were red and seemed to be holding back tears. Why? Aren't you supposed to be happy? I am. She looked down, smiled, and wiped her tears away. I finally feel like I've achieved something. Chapter 2595 Colton cupped her cheeks and looked into her eyes. You don't need to achieve anything. I can afford to take care of you. It would be fine even if you didn't achieve anything. I can take care of you. That's what you think, Freya said through tears. I don't need you to take care of me. I don't want people to look down on me. Colton pulled her into a hug. Who cares what other people think? I think you're good enough. Freya rested her chin on his shoulder and smiled happily. I think everything I've done is worth it. Her world was no longer dark with him and charm by her side. Colton kissed the top of her head and lowered his voice. All right, we should share the news with your friends. They've been supporting you all this time. Yes, I should tell them. Freya smiled and went upstairs, leaving him there. Colton didn't have to say that, but as long as she was happy. At Bassberg, at the Martial Arts Center. This place. The bitch mentioned that she's here. A few female thugs brought a group of people there. The leader was in his thirties with a buzz cut with a design and had a cigar in hand with a golden jade ring on his thumb. He also had a small beer belly. And looked chunky. He looked at the men next to him, and they kicked the doors open. Dylan, who was having a meal there, stood up with others. He saw that the newcomers looked angry and seemed to be there to pick a fight. Who are you? This isn't somewhere where you start fights. The female thug walked over. Who's that bitch called Cameron? My leader is here. 
Bring her out here. Dylan was surprised. Did Cameron bring trouble to the place? The leader blew out smoke rings and glared at Dylan as he said in a husky voice, The woman is quite cocky for threatening my sister. Dylan smiled and shrugged. You're late. We're closed, so she left already. If you want to see her, come back tomorrow. The man frowned and wasn't happy with Dylan's attitude. He clenched his jaw and flicked the ash from the cigar. He waved at his men. A buff guy with a snake tattoo on his neck walked forward. His biceps were almost as big as Dylan's head. When he noticed that they were going to fight, the people from the center walked over, not afraid of the thugs. They wouldn't start a fight but wouldn't back away from one, either. Dylan. Nick slowly walked down the stairs. Everyone looked over. The man was in a silk night robe and was holding a flask, seemingly just done with the shower. Dylan walked over. They're here to see Cameron. The girls were stunned when they saw him. The owner of the center was such a handsome man. He had beautiful eyes and sharp features. Even though he wasn't the usual good-looking man you saw, he would still stand out in a crowd. Nick walked over to the middle-aged man. What did she do? The man looked at him and clicked his tongue. You're the owner of this place. That woman named Cameron threatened my sister and said that we could find her here. That's very cocky. He then looked at Nick's men, who were behind him. You people think you can go around being cocky just because you know how to fight. Chapter 2596 Nick twisted the bottle open and took a sip. Then, he said, my people from the martial arts center will never cause trouble. I don't care. I want her today. Or else, I don't know what I'll do later. The middle-aged man approached Nick and patted his shoulder. I dare you to go around East Street and ask who Harold is. So what if you're very good at fighting? It means nothing if this martial arts center of yours is gone tomorrow, right? Dylan was enraged and took a step forward, but Nick stopped him. He looked the middle-aged man in the eye and said, We've been here for ten years. Do you think it's possible to make us disappear by tomorrow? The middle-aged man turned around and exchanged glances with the people behind him. As soon as they received his signal, they all charged at Nick. Nick splashed the cup of hot tea in his hand forward and grabbed the man's arm. He twisted the man's arm, and the sound of bone cracking could be heard in the air. The other two men attacked him from the sides and raised their legs, trying to kick Nick to the floor. However, Nick had seen, threw their tricks and took two steps back. After that, without giving them any chance to retaliate, he swiftly took them down in two or three blows. The middle-aged man's face sank and he ordered his men to attack Nick together. He had underestimated Nick. They were no match for Nick at all. They couldn't even last for ten minutes, and all of them were already squirming on the floor in pain. The girls in the group had never seen something like this before. All of them were startled and took a few steps back. The middle-aged man felt humiliated. He pointed at Nick and said, You wait here. He pulled his phone out and tried to make a call to summon more people. It was just that before he could make the call, a dagger appeared out of nowhere and knocked his phone out of his hand. The dagger zoomed across the air and stuck firmly on the dummy behind him. The middle-aged man turned his head slowly to look at the dagger that was stuck in the dummy and gulped. When he turned his head back, Nick was already standing in front of him. He returned his phone to him and said, Take your men with you and go. The middle-aged man took the phone and kicked the man beside him. Let's go. The group of men then limped away. Looking at them leaving with their tails between their legs, Dylan chuckled. These people really have overestimated themselves. Nick walked upstairs and said, close the door. Two of his disciples went forward and closed the door as he instructed. The next morning, as soon as Cameron stepped into the martial arts center, all of the people turned around and looked at her, especially Dylan. The way he looked at her made her feel like she might have killed his family. She walked forward and glanced at them. Why are you all looking at me like that? I'm your investor. Is this the way you treat the people who pay you? Dylan crossed his arms in front of his chest and snorted. Miss Southern, you're not at the East Islands. If you want to make trouble, go somewhere else. Don't bring any trouble to the martial arts center. I make trouble, Cameron scoffed. What kind of trouble did I make? How come I didn't? Before she could finish her sentence, 
Cameron suddenly thought of something she had done a week ago, and understanding instantly dawned upon her. She clapped her hands and said, Ah, those girls, did she bring her boss here? She had been waiting for them for a week. She had assumed they would not come anymore, so she had not expected them to come here while she was away. Dylan was infuriated by her reaction and said, Now you only remember what you did. We've been keeping a low profile ever since we set up our martial arts center here. But you're now using our name to cause trouble? It's fine if you're a troublemaker. But how can you lead them to our martial arts center? In the end, it's our boss who helped you settle the problem. Has it ever crossed your mind that your action might bring bad effects on our reputation? What if we're not allowed to rent this place anymore? Are you going to be responsible for our loss? Chapter 2597 Dylan felt it was not enough after he finished speaking and continued. Of course, you don't have to worry about anything since you have the Goldmans to back you up, but our boss is different. This martial arts center is what he has left. He's spent all his savings in this center. You said Nick has spent all his savings in this martial arts center. In her memory, the Wickhams were quite wealthy in Southeast Eurasia. Could it be that he had cut all his ties with his family after he left his home? Dylan turned around and said, Of course. Our boss has set up the martial arts center here for 10 years. He eats and sleeps here. The owner of this place refused to rent it to outsiders because he didn't want any trouble. Our boss went to talk to him in person for a week, and only then he reluctantly agreed to rent this place to him because of his sincerity. He even made the boss sign an agreement. If the boss causes any trouble during the lease, he will take it back. So look at what you've done now. If those people go around and say we bully them, we'll have to close this martial arts center tomorrow. Cameron fell silent. She was the one who had asked them to come to the martial arts center to look for her, but she did not expect that Nick had signed that kind of contract with the owner. Dylan and the other disciples went to do their stuff. Cameron stood for a while and hurriedly left the martial arts center after recalling something. Dylan turned his head around and saw her running away. Hey, just when he was trying to call her, she was already gone. The more he looked at Cameron, the more he felt she was a troublemaker. Apparently, those from the East Islands were barbaric. As he turned around, he saw Nick, who was standing on the second floor, and froze. Boss. Meanwhile, near the private elementary school. Damn it. That woman is afraid of coming out to meet our big brother. That's why she asked us to bring him to the martial arts center on purpose and caused us to get scolded. Standing against the wall, the red-haired girl lit up a cigarette. The more she heard the story from the female thugs beside her, the angrier she became. Her brother had slapped her because of what happened yesterday. Since that woman knows those two kids, I just need to get one of them and lure her out. When that thought surfaced in her head, one of the female thugs called out to her. Look over there. The red-haired girl looked around and saw Sapphire, who came down from a car. Those two female thugs hurriedly ran toward Sapphire and stopped her before she stepped into her school. Our sister wants to see you. After that, they dragged Sapphire to the corner. Looking at them, she clutched tightly at her bag and said, I already told you guys that I don't have any money anymore. The red-haired girl threw her cigarette on the ground and chuckled. I didn't say I want money now. She approached Sapphire and placed her arm on her shoulder. If you can help us to call the woman who helped you last time out, I'll let you go today. Sapphire was stunned for a moment. Why are they looking for her? But I don't know her. The red-haired girl's face sank, and she grabbed her jacket. You don't know her. Are you sure you don't want to tell us the truth? Do you want us to beat you up again? Someone grabbed her wrist when she raised her arm and was about to slap Sapphire. She turned her head around and saw Cameron. Cameron pushed her away and grabbed Sapphire to her side. Are you looking for me? The red-haired girl's eyes glowed up when she saw Cameron. Well, 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 look who's here. I thought you were a coward who could only hide in the martial arts center. So, why did you come out now? Cameron chuckled and said, I wasn't there yesterday, but it doesn't matter. I've come to see you guys now, right? She knew that they would come to these two kids since they couldn't find her yesterday. It was just that she did not expect them to have the audacity to come straight to the school. 
Chapter 2598 Miss, when Sapphire wanted to say something, Cameron rubbed her head and said, Go to your class first. You're getting late. Sapphire pressed her lips thin, and she kept turning her head around as she walked into her school. After she entered the campus, Cameron raised her hand and patted the red-haired girl's face. With a smile on her face, she said, Bring me to your brother. The group of female thugs was stunned. This was the first time they came across someone who had a death wish, but this was what they wanted. They then brought Cameron to a billiard center. The center was filled with smoke, and all of the men turned their heads around when they saw them. When the middle-aged man playing billiard saw that they had brought a woman over, he straightened his body and put his pool cue down. The red-haired girl walked over and said, Harold, she's the one. Cameron looked around the surroundings. She noticed that some of their legs or arms were cast. It seemed like they had gotten the short end of the stick when they went to the martial arts center the previous day. Harold examined Cameron and asked, You're the woman. Cameron crossed her arms in front of her chest and smiled. Yeah, that's me. Seeing her arrogant attitude reminded him again of what had happened yesterday. He clenched his jaw tightly, pushed aside the people around him, and walked toward Cameron. You just made a fool of us yesterday and still have the guts to present yourself before us today. It seems to me that you're pretty gutsy. Cameron raised her eyebrows lightly, her finger tapping on her arm in a rhythmic tempo as she said, Yeah, I'm quite a bold woman. It's my mistake that you came to look for me last night, but I wasn't around. This time, you don't have to look for me anymore. I've come for you guys. As soon as she finished speaking, she raised her leg and delivered a kick at Harold, sending him flying toward the pool table and smashing it in the process. Everyone was stunned. Harold, the few female thugs huddled together at the corner and watched the scene in horror. Covering his chest, Harold scrambled up off the floor and coughed a few times. Apparently, he did not expect Cameron to be so strong at all. He gnashed his teeth and said, Go get her. Upon receiving his command, all of his men rushed toward Cameron. Cameron leapt over the table and landed on the floor at the side. She kicked the table toward the group of people that were charging toward her. After that, she grabbed a pool cue and twirled it in her hand a few times before attacking them. She caused them to scream and shout out in pain whenever the pool cue landed on their hands or legs. When the pool cue was broken in half, Cameron performed a spin kick on the man in front of her, stepped on the fallen man, and leapt up, kicking away the two men who met her with her feet in the air. Two men were kicked down and thrown out with the people behind them. Harold and the group of female thugs were stunned. Cameron turned around and glanced at the few injured people who still wanted to attack. However, all of them were so startled that they all abandoned the idea and threw the pool cues in their hands on the floor. After that, Cameron walked toward Harold. Harold tried to move away from Cameron and asked, W what do you want? Stay away from me. Cameron grabbed him up from the floor single-handedly, and just when she was about to punch him, Harold shouted and fell to the floor on his knees, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, please stop hitting me, I promise I won't do it again. Cameron lowered her head and looked at the man kneeling on the floor. Will you still go to the martial arts center again? No, I promise I won't go there anymore. What about these girls? Harold turned his head to look at them. Sensing his gaze, they all got on their knees and said, We're very sorry about that. We promise that we won't go look for them anymore. Harold forced a smile on his face and said, See, they've already apologized to you. Chapter 2599 Harold glanced at the man behind Cameron. The man was getting up from the floor slowly. He drew a butterfly knife from his pocket and dashed toward Cameron. Cameron performed a sidekick hitting the man's neck squarely and sending him flying across the room before smashing into a pot. Harold was stunned. Cameron turned around to look at him. The corner of Harold's lips quivered as he just wanted to cry right now. I, I, Cameron grinned, and her face sank. She stepped on his leg, causing him to scream out in pain. I'm sorry, she leaned forward while looking at Harold with a devilish smile tugging at the corner of her lips. I heard that your supporter is Mr. Selfridge, right? Meanwhile, at a private swimming pool. Mr. Selfridge, over here. Come and catch me. 
Mr. Selfridge, over here. There were a lot of things going on in the pool. Conroy was wearing a blindfold while playing hide-and-seek with a few beautiful internet celebrities. However, he couldn't catch any of them. He was tickled by their laughter and grinned. You guys are really good at hide-and-seek, but it doesn't matter. As long as I catch you, I'll give you $50,000. When those girls heard what he said, all of them gathered around him. Mr. Selfridge, I'm here. Come and catch me. Just as Conroy got one in his arms, a noise rang out in the air, and then Harold's voice wafted into his ears. Mr. Selfridge, Mr. Selfridge. Annoyed, Conroy took off the blindfold and shouted, Damn it. Can't you see that I am? Before he could finish his sentence, Cameron kicked Harold into the pool. Get out of my way. She walked inside, and when Conroy saw her, his expression changed. It's you. Harold flailed his arms wildly in the pool and shouted, Mr. Selfridge, save me. Cameron glanced at him and said, Stop it. The pool is shallow. I'm sure your feet can touch the ground. Harold stopped flailing his arms and looked at Conroy. Conroy waved his hand and told the girls beside him to back off as he got up and walked toward Cameron with an aggressive look on his face. When Cameron looked at him, his knees went weak, and he plopped to the ground in front of Cameron. Cam, I didn't cause any trouble. Harold was stunned and knew he was a goner this time. After a short while, both of them knelt in front of Cameron. None of them dared to say anything. Cameron was sitting with her legs crossed on a chair. Holding a straw while drinking juice, she said, I'm a reasonable person. I can accept your apology, but I need to see your sincerity. Conroy stared at Harold, who was kneeling beside him. Harold shuddered and forced a smile on his face. I, I'm sorry, Cam. I know I did something wrong. I hope you can be the bigger person and forgive me. Conroy then hurriedly chimed in and said, Cam, it's this guy who's causing trouble using my name. It has nothing to do with me at all. Harold looked at him. Mr. Selfridge, didn't you say you'd support us? Conroy took a deep breath and rolled his eyes at Harold. Did I ask you to go to the martial arts center? You guys don't even know who you're dealing with, and you still want me to support you. I was having a good time here while you guys were causing trouble outside, and you still expect me to help you. His father had told him that he would disown him if he dared to cause any trouble again. If he was kicked out of his family, and after his father took back all his cards, would he still be able to enjoy the life he had now? It was not that he couldn't bear to live a poor life for a while. At the very least, he could still go home. But what if even his home was gone? Where was he going to go at that time? After all, Cameron was the future daughter-in-law of the Goldmans, and there was no way they could fight against the Goldmans. Harold lowered his head in aggravation as he realized that whatever he said was wrong. Chapter 2600 Cameron lifted her eyelids and said, Not bad. It has only been a while, but you're getting better at admitting your own mistakes. It seems to me that you've learned your lesson well. Conroy grinned and said, Of course, I've learned my lesson well. Cameron put the glass of juice down, and Conroy hurriedly asked his men to fill it up for her. All of you will be rewarded handsomely if you can treat her well. Cameron rolled her eyes around in the sockets and looked at Conroy. Conroy did not know why she was looking at him that way, so he asked, What's wrong, Cam? Grinning, Cameron said, Are you familiar with the location of the Martial Arts Center? He replied without any hesitation, Of course. Cameron stood up and walked forward to pull Conroy up from the floor. Then, she patted his shoulder and said, very good. Mr. Selfridge, I need you to help me do something. Conroy was stunned. The landlord looked at Conroy's contract and pushed his eyeglasses. After a short while, he raised his head and looked at Conroy, sitting on the couch in front of him, and Cameron and Harold, who were behind him. Conroy cleared his throat and said, If you're not satisfied with the price, you can just say it. Are you sure you want to buy that lot, Mr. Selfridge? Do I look like I'm joking with you? Of course, I'm going to buy it. After all, he had enough money to buy the lot. The landlord said, but I don't plan to sell that place. You're not selling it. Conroy leaned forward and said, why not? Don't you want money? Could it be that you're not satisfied with the price I offered you? 
That's not what I meant, Mr. Selfridge, said the landlord. That place is my private property. I'm planning to take it back to do some business after the lease term expires. Besides, if you're interested in buying a store, I can introduce you to another place. Conroy turned his head around to look at Cameron. Cam, what do you think? Cameron rested her chin on her hand and fell into thought. I see. No wonder he doesn't want to sell it. So it's his private property. Sir, you said that their lease term will expire after 25 years, right? The landlord looked at Cameron and replied respectfully, yes. Since it's your private lot, we won't force you to sell it to us. But you mentioned that you have other places as well, right? Can you show them to us? The landlord smiled and said, sure. I've bought another two places for rent. They're both in the same location, and I'm sure you'll be satisfied. The landlord led them to a store with its doors closed. The store was a three-story building. It was close to the business district on the east and to the financial street on the west. The subway station was not far away, so the accessibility was convenient. After opening the security door, the landlord turned on the lights and led them inside the store. The lot was spacious and looked new. The first floor was noticeably larger than the martial arts center. Other than the parlor, there were three larger areas. There were also elevators inside the hall, and the stairs were just next to the elevators. There was a receptionist desk and a few more rooms on the second floor. Conroy walked up to Cameron and said, This place is good, Cam. It's a three-story building, and it's very spacious. I think you should take it. Standing on the second floor, Cameron looked around and realized that most decorations were new. What was this store used for previously? The landlord replied, It used to be a beauty salon. But after they got a new store, they moved downtown, so I bought it from the previous owner, and it has been vacant since then. If you're considering buying it, I can help you with all the formalities at any time. Cameron smiled and nodded. Sure, please reserve it for me. I'll give you an answer in another two days. Okay, this is my name card. You can contact me at any time. The landlord handed his name card to Cameron. After all of them came out of the lot, Conroy and Harold walked behind her and said, Cam, I think this store lot is going to cost a lot of money. Although I really want to help you, if it exceeds my budget, I...